right, so today I'm going to show you how to make pods like the ones that I've been showing uh, in my windowsill uh, the last few videos. And basically the first thing you're going to want to do is make a template for your cuts in the bottle. So what you're going to need, of course, is you're going to need the ruler, you're going to need a sharpie, you're going to need scissors, and you're going to need something to actually make the template out of. And what I basically did is I made the template out of a... Um, sort of a plastic, really thin plastic uh, binder tab. And this, I'm not going to go into the whole detail on making it because I already made it, but this is the end product. Uh, basically it's going to be five inches by four and a half inches. And uh, the way you're going to use it is that once you get the label off the bottle, you're going to stick this on the bottle and uh, it should stick with the glue that's still on there. And you're going to use this template to draw the lines on the bottle to cut the hole. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to measure uh, five inches by four and a half inches and you're going to draw that on your binder tab and you're going to use the scissors to cut it out. And what you're going to end up with is a little template like this. And I'll explain how to use that template later. Alright, so once you have your template ready, the next step is going to actually make the pod. Uh, and this is the stuff that you're going to need to do that. The first thing you're going to need, of course, is the template you just made. You're going to need the Sharpie that you used to make the template. You're going to need super glue. You're going to need the bottle that's going to become the pod. And uh, the bottle, I guess, is, um, what, 5.4 ounces? It's about three liters. You're going to need some Zacto knives or scissors and something to make holes with uh, because what you're going to do is you're going to make holes in the side of the pod to put a zip tie through to hold it firm to the pole. So this is the basic stuff you need to make the pod and I'll try to do that here in just a minute. Alright, so basically we need five of these bottles right here. Uh, to make a set of pods like I have in my windowsill. And what I've done with this one right here is I've filled it up with really hot water, which is going to make it a lot easier to pull this label off the bottle. Once I get the label off the bottle, I'll just take the water that's in the bottle, pour it into another one, let it sit for a minute, and do the same thing, and I'll do that for all five bottles. So we're going to see if this is going to come off yet. Yeah, look at that. And so what happens is, is when you pull this label off, there's still going to be some glue on there. And that glue is actually going to hold your template to the bottle while you draw your lines around the template. Alright, so I've got the label off of the bottle, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it into the next bottle and do the same thing. I'll do that for all five bottles. Hopefully I'll be pouring water all over my desk, but we'll see what happens. Yep. Yep, I just poured water all over my desk. So it'd be a good idea to get some paper towels when you do this, just in case you do what I did. It's okay, my desk needed to be cleaned off anyway. So there we go. And that's our first labelless bottle and a really wet desk. I might also mention that when you do this to uh, make sure you leave the tops off the bottles after you pour the water out otherwise your bottle will collapse in on itself. Alright, so when you're pouring the water it might actually help to tip the bottle a little bit the one that you're pouring into as well as the one that you're pouring out of. 
back. So although it is going to be a little bit warm on your hands, this water is hot. Like I said, it's necessary for the water to be hot so that it warms up the glue on the label that's on the outside of the bottle so that you can pull off the label without actually ripping the label into a bunch of shreds and making a big mess. Alright, and this is my fourth bottle that I'm pouring into right now. And what I'm probably going to do when I get done with the fifth bottle is uh, stick the water in the sixth bottle, let it cool down use it for the plants. Just let it sit for a minute, maybe not even a minute, for about 30 seconds and you can pull the label right off the bottle. Alright, so I just finished with the fifth bottle right here and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it and uh, I'm going to pour the water into a sixth bottle. I've actually, I've got three more bottles that I'm not going to do the labels on until I get another two more bottles to make another set of five. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this into a sixth bottle, let it cool down like I said, and uh, use it for some plants later on. I don't want to waste the water. There's my sixth bottle. Take it and pour it in there. Oh, that sticky glue. Alright. Start it this way. Tilt it. And pour. If I wanted to, I could just go ahead and take the label off, but uh, like I said, I'm not going to do that for this set. I'll save this for the next time around. Because I don't want a sticky bottle sitting around, a bunch of dirt get on it and everything else before I get a chance to really get to it and do anything with it. Alright. I'm actually going to set this down there with the uh, lid off because like I said, once the water cools, it'll do the same thing as the other bottle did. When it just had air in it. When the air cooled down and the lid was on, it couldn't suck any air in, so it sucked the bottle in. Uh, the same thing will happen with the bottle here with hot water. If once the water cools down, if the lid's on top of it, it'll suck the bottle in. So I, mean, I don't really want to damage the bottles too much. So I'll just set that on there loosely and uh, set it down in the floor to cool off, and I'll pour it in my plants later. What I have here now is one, two, three, then four, five bottles ready to get the template stuck to them and the hole drawn on them, the lines drawn on them so we can cut the hole out. Now I'll mention too before I do that, before I uh, Now I'll mention too, before I actually put the template on here and cut the holes out and everything, uh, the plastic piece that you cut out of here, do not discard that because you're going to need it later. What we're going to do is we're going to cut those in half and uh, we're going to super glue them to the sides of the bottle to help give it some strength because these bottles are going to stack on top of each other. And uh, you know there's going to be some dirt in them probably up to about right here. So that added weight uh, is going to need some support. Alright, so now that you got all the labels off, you're ready to stick your template on there uh, and cut your hole in the bottle. Uh, the one thing I want to point out before we do that is, I don't know if you can see it in the video or not, but uh, if you have any of these bottles on your own, you'll probably notice that they've got a seam in the bottles right here. That seam goes all the way down the front, and that is the whole purpose of this line down the middle of the template. Now I only wrote these dimensions on here for this video. I actually did not originally have these letters on here. Uh, but those letters were just so you could see what lengths to cut this thing. 
Uh, looks like a backwards. Yeah, anyway, there you go. And uh, so anyway, what you're going to do is you're going to take the top of the middle line, you're going to line it up on the seam, and you're going to do the same thing with the bottom of the middle line. You're going to kind of do this up close to the top. Just above, just above that little wave right there. Well, your template should look on there and a glue of course helps hold it on so what you're going to do now is you're going to take your sharpie you're going to draw around the edges of that template there and uh, you don't want to make rounded edges because it makes it a little bit more hard for you to get your hand in there if you need to or to get plants in and out of there if you need to uh, so you want the hole as big as you could possibly get it without it making the integrity of the bottle uh, too weak so it doesn't crumble in upon itself when you stack other balls on top of it. Basically, mark it with the sharpie. Like so. Like that. Make sure you got a good sharpie too, not one of them old ones that doesn't want to write. Uh, because you're going to want a good line on these bottles that you can actually see. Now I've drawn the line around this template and uh, now it's time to take the template off. Take a look at what we've done. Ta-da! Now we have a blue line drawn around a bottle that shows what we're going to cut out. Now you can actually go on and finish drawing the lines on all your bottles if you want to. You can go ahead and cut it out. It's just however you feel like you want to do it. I am actually going to go ahead and draw the lines on all the bottles before I start doing my cutting. Alright, so here's another tip that I wanted to mention too. Uh, I'm actually on my third bottle right here and I just thought of this. Uh, you'll notice that the back of the bottle has handles on it. Okay. You don't want to put your template on the back of the bottle. Make sure that you put it on the front where the glue is at. Um, because if you put it back there on the back, it's just, it's, it's going to be a mess. Don't do that. Do it on the front. Alright, so I'm on my last bottle. I'm about to draw the uh, lines on here that show where I'm going to cut this thing out. But uh, there's something else that I wanted to point out that I just thought about too. Uh, for those of you who didn't already know, um, this is five inches across this line is directly in the center of that five inches so it's two and a half inches from this edge to the center you want to make sure that you measure two and a half inches from here to here and from here to here and draw that line straight down so it's exactly in the center of your template and as you can see there's not that much as much glue on this one so my template sort of popped off I told that on there probably when I draw this one and my numbers are backwards again but you get the idea. Alright, so I've just drawn the lines on my last model here and uh, the next step is actually to cut these things out. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut them out on this one bottle right here and uh, show you basically how it's done and uh, I'll do the other four bottles a little bit later. And uh, But I do want to get at least one bottle ready because really that's all I have enough dirt for right now and when I get some more dirt then I can add the other four on top of this later. So, uh, what you're going to need to do this I'm already done with this thing here. I'm done with the template. What you're going to need to do this with is a knife and scissors. Basically, you're going to, and you be careful when you do this because Zacto knives are really sharp. You can cut yourself. You're going to punch a hole. And, you know, your cut may not be 
perfect. That's fine, don't worry about it. Just try to follow the line as best you can. Okay, so I've cut the bottom line here. And what I'm going to do, I'm not going to cut the side lines yet, I'm going to cut the top line. Once I cut the top line, then I'll start working on the side ones. This should make the cutting go a little bit easier for you. Alright, so now I've got uh, three of these things cut out. I've got the bottom, the top, and the left side over here. Uh, while you're trying to cut the right side, it's probably going to be a good idea to hold it so that it's a little bit easier to manage while you're cutting. It's a little bit tricky to cut when you get down to these little grooves on the side of the bottle here. And you've got to be very careful with your Zacto knife. I know because I've had a few accidents with them in the past. Cut the tip of my thumb off once. It's always the same thumb. I uh, cut the tip of my thumb off a couple of years ago. It grew back. There's just a big scar there. And uh, I sliced, almost filleted the skin off my very same thumb one time. Alright, so now you've got your hole here, as you can see. Uh, your dirts are going to be filled up to about right here, and you're able to get your hand in there pretty decently. So, yeah, there you go. That was stupid. Anyway, but you can get your whole hand in there if you need to. And now it doesn't matter if you put the lid back on it because you've got a big open gaping hole in the side. Alright. Now, you've got the hole in here. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take this part. And remember, it's got a seam right down the middle of it. What you're going to do is you're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut down that seam. Like so. Make sure you got some good sharp scissors. Or this is going to be a pain in the butt. My scissors are sharp. Alright. Alright, so now once, you, once you've got your center part cut out and you cut it down the center seam. You've got two pieces here. You're going to use these two pieces. You notice I've got the wavy line up here at the top. You're going to use these two pieces. And I'm going to do this right now. And for this part, you need super glue. Uh, I don't know if I got enough. I hope I do. Uh, but anyway, you're going to super glue these onto the side right here. that off. But anyway, you can actually make these grooves right here fit these grooves down here, but because this one's wavy it may not work without cutting the wavy part off the top. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut the wavy part off the top so that it quits being a booty. I had a martial arts teacher one time say that it's better to be a Buddha than a booty. He was right. Part. Okay, so now I've got an even edge up here. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna put super glue on this. If it's not all dried up, and if I'm not out, yeah, I got some super glue. All right, there we go. Super glue. And since I am almost out, I'll turn the super glue upside down so it'll be ready for the next time around. Sit it there like that. Okay. We'll take this. This is the edge that we cut off. Try not to get your fingers in the super glue and match the grooves. Like so. And you're going to probably hold it on there for a little bit because it's going to take a little bit to dry. While that's sitting on there, I'm trying not to mess with it too much. I just want the glue to take. Yeah, I'm sitting here messing with it the whole time. Anyway, that just puts a double layer of plastic there so it keeps it from bending out or bowing out. 
And I'm going to do the same thing with this other piece here. Now when I do the other bottle, since I only have enough dirt for just this one, when I do the other bottles, I'm just going to cut these in half and I'm going to stick them in here like that until I'm ready for them. That way they're in there when I need them. And probably when I get some more super glue. And I think I need some clothespins to hold this thing in place. I'm going to go get some clothespins. Off my trusty bedroom clothesline, i got four clothespins. Take this, put it on there, take this, put it on there. Alright, now I'm going to work on the other side over here. I'm going to cut the wavy part off the top right here. I know it's hard to see this stuff because it's like really clear. But I'm going to cut this wave off the top of this right here. And you can take blue line right here. And remember the part that the wave was on goes up top, but you can take the blue line and match it to the blue line over here on the side of this bottle, right down through here. Put some super glue on. Super glue. It's awesome as long as you don't get it stuck on your fingers. I know it's pretty useful if you want to stick it on somebody's mouth sometimes. But you go to jail for that, so don't do it. Alright. So the part with the wave is up here. I'm going to take it, I'm going to get the edges even over here and match these grooves like so. I'm going to use my clothespins to hold it in place until the glue dries. There we go. So, when the glue dries on these things, we'll basically we'll be taking the clothespins off. They don't stay on there. Um, yeah, and so that's how you do the first part. Uh, later, we're going to actually drill a couple holes in the side here because what we're going to do is stick it up against a pole. We're going to run a zip tie through there and zip tie it to the pole so it stays in place. But I'll show you that later. And I'm going to set this one aside and I'm going to cut out the rest of them. And I'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay, so I'm on. Uh, I'm working on my second bottle here. And I'm at the point where I'm cutting these things in half now. I just got this one cut out. Another thing too is that besides the super glue, these things still also have glue on them that's pretty sticky as you can probably hear. My fingers stick into that right there. But once I cut these in half and I actually stick them on there with the super glue, um, that glue is going to help hold them in place too. But uh, what I wanted to show you, because I'm not actually going to use these yet, I'm only going to use the one. I am cutting this one in half down the seam that's in the center. And I'm not going to cut the tops of these off where the wave is until I'm actually ready to glue these things on the bottle because I want Look at that. I'm stuck to my finger from the glue. Anyway, um, I want to know where the top of this is going to be. So when I go to orient it onto the thing here, I'm going to want to make sure I know where the top is. So the wavy parts up top. I'll know that next time around when I get ready to put some dirt in these and plant some new stuff. When I go to cut this off and super glue it, I'll know which way it's supposed to go. That glue is really sticky. And I just stick them in there like that until I'm ready to put the glue on. That's it. Next. Here's another good thing about the glue on these bottles. It helps you hold them in place. Okay, so this is, um, I've finished cutting out the uh, fronts of my other bottles and um, this has been setting for a little bit for the glue to dry. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and uh, 
mark two little spots where I'm going to drill some holes. Right here. I don't know if you can see that or not. And right here. And they're about an inch apart. Uh, just, you know, to kind of give you an idea of the width of the pole there that they're going to be attached to. And you want to make sure that you mark the holes that you're going to drill on the side of where the pole is actually going to go up and down. So, on this particular bottle, I've done it on the left side. I'm going to drill the holes in here. You could just as easily probably poke a hole in there with your Zacto knife or whatever. Me, I got to use a drill. Because it's fine. Even if I mess it up. Here we go. Go in the right direction. Yeah. You know what? I'll just go up here in a groove. Ah, it didn't work. All right. Start slow. There we go. There's the first hole. Keep my finger out of the way. You know what? I'm gonna go up here in a groove again because it seems like it's easier in a groove. Punch a hole in there. Start slow. There you go. So I got two holes in there now. And uh, when I go to attach to the pole, I'll stick a zip tie in there. And uh, that's how we'll attach to the pole. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get my zip tie ready. And uh, I'm going to start from the outside. You know, you make sure you got this thing oriented correctly. Uh, otherwise, your zip ties are going to come right out. So I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to stick this in this hole here. back around, go in the other hole, just like that, and there you go, that's good enough, I mean it can look silly until you're ready to use it. Now, <clears throat> if you've already got the pole put together great, in uh, my case I don't have it yet, so um, I'm going to show you that part right now, and then we'll come back to this. But as you can see here, uh, these are all attached to a pole here on the side. And uh, basically, like I showed you before, it's just a broom handle, that's all it is, that I've taken the bristles off the end of right down there. What I had to do was I took a, uh, a drill and I drilled a small hole up there to start one of these. It looks like this. And uh, I slide the pole right over the hook. Now, this hook is a little bit too far over, so I'm actually going to move it over to that little spot right there. So I'm going to drill a hole, I'm going to take that hook out, and I'm going to stick the hook in the new hole. And then uh, we're going to hang the broom handle on it. And that broom handle, by the way, is going to go down the side of these pods, right here. But it's not going to attach to them. This is going to attach to the new set of pods. Alright, now I've got my hook in the new spot, and I'm going to uh, hang the broom handle up there. And uh, I'm going to have to move plants to do this and figure out what to do with a little pepper, but uh, I'll figure that out in a minute. Alright, and there we are with the broom handle hanging on there. Um, it's dark outside, so it's really hard to see this. I should have done this in the daylight, but I was asleep. But anyway, the uh, broom handle just kind of hangs down there, and we're going to attach the pod to it. Once I get some dirt in there. Now I'm going to point out too that uh, once I get the pods attached to this, the broom handle doesn't really even hang from the hook. It just kind of holds the, the hook kind of holds it in place so it doesn't flip over and fall out of the window. Uh, so none of the weight really is going to be on the hook. It's all pretty much going to be on the pods. Alright, so uh, let me get my pod filled up with dirt and we'll get it stuck over here and uh, I'll show you all that in just a minute. Alright, so now I've got some dirt in my little pod here. It's still not zip tied to the thing yet, and I'm about to do that here in just a second. I'll zip it down real tight, and uh, once I'm done, all I've got to do is plant some seeds and maybe put a little bit of plastic over here on the front of it until the seeds are out, and I think I'm going to put some little cherry tomatoes in here. So uh, I'm going to zip tight, and we'll see how it goes. Alright, so now this one is zip tied in place, so 
as you can see right there, it's a dud to the um, room handle. Uh, next, I'm going to put some water in it. I'm going to plant some little seeds, and then I'm going to put some plastic over it. And of course, the water is going to come out of the fish tank, as usual. Get another cup. Get my cup in here. Let it drip off a little bit. Pour the water in. Get it nice and moist. Let the dirt suck that up some. I'll have to fix that hole in a minute. Get some more. Fill up my fish tank again too apparently. Put some more water in there. That's a lot of water. Maybe I'll dip some of that out. Alrighty, so I made some little holes in the dirt there and I planted some cherry tomato seeds in there and uh, closed little holes over it. gotten a lot of the water dipped out of there and I accidentally got too much of in. There we go. And the next step would be to put the plastic on there. And uh, plastic is going to be made from a spot baggie. I'll show you that in a minute. Alright, so to make the plastic piece that goes on the front of the pods uh, that we're going to tape on there to keep the moisture inside the pod while the seeds are sprouting, uh, we need our template again. And uh, it's pretty simple. We're basically going to take our Sharpie here and um, put a mark about three quarters of an inch off of each corner. It doesn't have to be exact as long as it covers the hole. Now that should cover the hole right there. So now I can uh, take the template off of here. Basically just take my scissors and uh, cut from dot to dot. You know, like when you're a kid, dot to dot. You know what though? This is an old desk so I don't really care that much if I scratch it a little bit. My little girl has drawn on it and scratched it anyway. So I am going to take a straight edge here. I'm going to lay it down. This is easier, trust me, than using scissors. And my straight edge is metal. And uh, I'm going to take the Zacto knife. And I'm going to scratch my desk doing this, but like I said, it doesn't matter. It's already been drawn on, and water's been poured all out on it, and uh, Harvest Man has scratched it up a lot, and the finish is coming off. Eventually, I might, you know, try to sand this down, but basically, I'm just going to Run my Zacto knife along the straight edge there. Oh, look at that. Real easy. Come over here to the other side. Do the same thing. And I'm not really pressing that hard, you know, just hard enough, barely hard enough to cut so the scratches aren't even that bad on my desk. Uh, but, you know, if you want to keep your furniture nice and everything, put something under this like a cutting board. Uh, anyway, um, Slide down the edge, and you can use scissors if you want to. What's that call like there? Yeah, good enough. You can use scissors if you want to, but this is so much easier. Yeah, I got to turn it. there and before I go too much further I'm gonna get the bottom one because there's a seam down there and we don't want the seam and you're not seeing this on camera that's okay I just cut off the seam straight edge and now I've got two pieces of plastic here that I can take to the front hole on that pod. Now I'm not going to use one of them. Uh, the other 
one I can use for another pod later. I'm going to put the one that's extra in my desk for later. And now we need electrical tape. I'm not sure if I got enough on this roll. Let's see. Lay some out here. That, that one. Barely. Cut it. Lay sticky side up. Get in trouble with all this sticky stuff here. Get off my finger. Alright. Alright, get off my Zacto knife. Get off my finger. There we go. Okay. Alright. Now, sticky side up. I'm going to go about halfway to the center of the tape of the plastic. And I'm going to stick the plastic on it. Hold my fingers on it again. Okay, because now that i got the plastic on here, I'm going to get my finger off. Ha ha ha. And I'm going to smooth that down on the tape. Now, we got plastic on half the tape, half the tape exposed. This half the tape that is exposed is going to hold this plastic to the pod. Looking for some more tape here in a minute. We'll see. Shortly. Oh, yeah. Yep. I'm going to be looking for some more tape. That was the end of it. Alright, I'll be with you guys in just a minute. Just so happens I found another little roll of tape uh, in my little drawer right up here on my desk. I had forgotten it was up there, but it's the first place I looked. I'm glad I did, so I saved myself a lot of time. Alright, now so I'm going to put tape on the rest of the plastic here on the other three sides that I did not get with the other roll. Let's pull it off. Kind of pull it down about the length of the plastic. Cut it. Get it off the freaking finger. Hmm. You got that fish tank back there? I got my little uh, filter running. I got a friend online, George. He was in Australia. He called that my little pond. I think that's awesome. I never put up that way. It's pretty cool. Alright, so sticking the plastic to the tape. Flattening the plastic down on the tape. Alright, so that's two sides. You gotta do this side and this side. Down the sides right there. Okay, we get to take the right length. Cut it. Take off the scissors. Get to tape off my fingers. Zacto off my finger, off the Zacto. There we go. And we are going to. Again, go to the center of the tape. Stick her down. You can't go up there. Smooth it out. It's okay if it crinkles a little bit. As long as it holds the moisture inside the pod, we're good. Alright, now I've got three sides there. Don't, we? Ah, don't you get stuck yet. It. There we go. Need you back. There we go. Finger. Plastic down. To it. About midway. And there we go. We are ready to stick this to the pod. Over the hole on the pod. Alright, so uh, I couldn't hold the camera and tape it on here at the same time to show you how it goes, but I mean, it's pretty self explanatory. It just it covers the hole completely. The tape makes a seal. 
all up and down, all four sides. The moisture stays inside um, so that the seedlings will get the moisture they need. And of course there's little holes over here on the side where the zip ties are so that some of the moisture can escape so it doesn't stay soggy in here all the time. But anyway, that's basically how I do my pods. And uh, you know, as I go, I will stack them up like that. And I will uh, zip tie them. You know, like I did the first one, I'll put more plants up there. And I can do them five high, just like that. One, two, three, four, and five. And I'll have a whole new set of pods over here with new plants or vegetables or whatever in there that's small that can fit in there anyway. Alright, so that's how I did the pods. There you go. Have fun trying this yourself.